Right, time for the second installment in this series of Call Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop. Last time we looked at that timer and we got that working again. Don't know if I'll find a use for that, but today we're looking at the tuner. So this should be a much more interesting video than what we had last time. As you can see, this is normal push button design, so I imagine it's using some kind of phase lock loop circuit in there to actually do the tuning. It does have a ferrite rod antenna on the back, if you could just about make that out. Yeah, we've got all the connections for antennas here. This whole array of weird connectors here. Audio outputs and a cutoff power jack. So, first thing I'm going to do is replace the power cord and we'll see what we get. Actually, first thing I've got to do is open this thing up. So, I thought we'd start at the bottom with this removable panel right here. I've taken the screws out. Let's have a look at what's underneath. Pretty much what I thought, although I think right away I can see something that doesn't look all that healthy. Oh no, it's just the way the light was shining on it. Looks like these parts of the circuit board get pretty hot. That's just why there's holes are there. Well, let's take the top cover off it and see what we've got inside. This actually has a fair bit of weight to it, so I'd imagine it's got quite a lot of stuff inside. No user serviceable parts inside. Well, we'll see about that. We'll see about that. Okay, here we are inside the tuner. Now this looks a bit weird, looks like we've got two transformers here, I'm not exactly sure if that other thing is a transformer or not. Is that, yeah, I think that is a transformer actually, it's kind of odd why they have two. Looks like everything is all on one board here. There's our main tuning module there, I'm going to leave that well alone because don't want to muck about with anything inside that because if I do it will probably never work again so I'm going to do what I did before I'm going to replace the power cord on this see if it even turns on and then we'll see where we go from there okay I thought I'd show you the procedure of replacing a power cord now as you can see I've taken the old power cord out there is a hole right there where the clip thing used to be I mean where the cord grip used to be this is the cord grip right here. Now if we have a close look at this, you might be able to see there's a clip right there. So that goes in like that. When that's in there like that, that is not going to come out. So to get this out, I just push that clip in. Like that. And then it just pops right out. So I've got the new cable right here. For some reason it's not showing up on the camera, but it's there. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just put that through the hole to see how much wire we're going to need. Okay, so we're going to need about that much wire. So then I'll just put the clip on the wire like this. Squeeze it nice and tight. It's got to be really nice and tight. And just put that through again. Push the clip through. This can be a bit of a tight squeeze at times. It should go in with a little bit of effort. Come out to the other side and push it in. And it's coming in. And there we go. So now I've got the new power cord securely fastened in place. I just need to solder it onto those terminals there. And we'll be ready to give this a test run. And there we are. The new power cord is put in place. Now I know I said I was going to do a teardown of this thing. But unfortunately I cannot get this front panel off. I've tried. I've, I took off every screw. Now this thing just simply will not budge. And I don't want to try and force anything and break it. So... Yeah, that's just going to have to stay on like that. I will say that though, I do like the way they've marked the circuit board here. So without looking up any schematics or anything like that, I can see what most of these trimmers do. Like for instance, we've got the 19kHz Pilot Tone FM adjust right there. 
And over here we've got the AM intermediate frequency adjust there. If I need to align this, which I don't think I will need to do, I'll at least know where everything is. Well, okay, let's see if this thing even powers on. Again, I'm doing the light bulb trick, so if there is any short circuits anywhere, I'm not likely to fry anything, so let's just put that in and we'll see if we get anything. Okay, well, we have a red LED. I don't see anything on the uh, display. Let's see if pressing that turns anything on. Ah, looking good so far. We've got it, the display has come on, and these backlights for the channel selectors come on, so that's pretty good. Well, um, let's hook up an aerial to this and see if it works. Okay, well, I've got one channel of it hooked up to my mixer, so uh, when I turn this on, you'll be able to hear it on YouTube as well as I can hear it through the speakers. So, let's turn this on. Okay, we have this. That's a good sign. Um, let's see if we can tune in something. Automatic tuning. Can I just hold it down? Something? Ah, yeah. Receiving something. I'm sure with a decent aerial, the FM reception will be much better than this. For now, I'm just using a piece of wire. The thing is, when I put my hand near it, comes in nice and quickly. Looks like this had some presets in it. Thing is, better not play too much of these, because, you know. Oh, it seems to be going through them automatically. Strange. Okay, let me shut this thing up. Well, the FM's definitely working. Don't want to play too much of anything it might pick up because don't want another copyright strike. I wonder how good the AM sounds on this. I don't know, so I'm going to hook the aerial up to one of the AM connections and let's have a listen. So let's... Okay, well, I'm sure that's nothing. I wonder if Classic Gold still broadcast. Not really good much on the end. Let's see, does 1332 still broadcast? Hmm, maybe if I turn the lights out. Because I got that light right next to a fluorescent light. Hmm. Not really getting much on AM, but there's a lot of stuff in there that's going to interfere anyway. Just getting static at the moment. It's okay, people. I found the reason why the AM was so noisy. This is the culprit right here. Had this little power supply plugged in quite near it. It's throwing out a ton of interference. But then you can expect that from a cheap little switch mode thing. Anyway, want to demonstrate it now. As Radio Fun 232 says, the AM is now much better. Hear that? Coming in nice and clear. So this is medium wave. Long wave. He was about to apologize for anything, for everything. And of course, FM, which comes in blaringly loud. Okay. And there we are. Anyway, not going to play any more of that because you know what YouTube's copyright is like just lately. Don't know what we can play and cannot play. 
So we have a winner. No, this needs is a damn good clean. And I think you know what's coming up in the next video. So I'm going to get on and do that right now in the next episode.